Hi friends, my name is Alex and I work at the Bay Area Discovery Museum. Today I'll be sharing with you a fun activity on light and shadow. And you can try this activity using things that you find around where you live. Do you like watching how your shadow moves in the sunlight? I hope that many of you answered yes to this question because I know that I like keeping track of my own shadow from time to time. Sometimes if you're standing in a certain spot, you can even make your shadow appear taller than you actually are, right? Awesome. So, today we're going to explore how light moves around certain objects to create shadows. So here, I have a bowl. What do we notice about this bowl? Yeah, some things that I notice are that it's white and blue, it's round, and it's small. What would happen if we place this object in front of the light? Wow, look at the shadow. It's really dark, right? This is an opaque material. Opaque materials don't let a lot of light pass through and they create dark shadows. I also have a Tupperware top. What do we notice about this? Yeah, it's blue, it's square, and we can kind of see through it. Now what would happen if we place it in front of the light? Do you see how different that shadow is? It's not as dark and we can kind of see a little of the blue on the wall. This is a translucent material. Translucent materials let some light pass through and they can even create a colorful shadow. Now what would happen if we used our own hands to create shadow puppets? You can try this activity using a blank wall and a flashlight. It's totally okay if you don't have a blank wall. If there are things on it, you can still do this. And if you don't have a traditional flashlight, you can even try using the flashlight feature on a cell phone or a lamp. Some of you may also be indoors, so you're going to want a little bit of darkness to try this activity. So you could do this by shutting a door or closing the blinds or turning off the lights. So let's try making a bird like we saw in the beginning of the video. You'll take your left hand, keep four fingers together and your thumb up. You'll cross your right hand next to your left in the same exact position. You'll place your thumbs together and move your hands back and forth like the bird is flapping its wings. Our hand is an opaque object, so as we learned before, not a lot of light passes through it. What happens if we move our hand closer and farther away from the light? Do we see how the shadow grows and shrinks? Yeah. Let's see if we can make some other shadow puppets. Let's see if we can make a dog. A dog will take our left hand, just like we did when we made the bird, four fingers together and thumb up. You'll take your right hand, place it over your left, and keep your thumb up. So now you have ears. You'll move your pinky up and down to make it look like the dog is barking. To make a swan, you'll get your arm involved for this one. You'll bend it at a 90 degree angle, bend your hand and create a beak. You'll take your left hand, put it in the crook of your arm and splay out your fingers like feathers. You can move it back and forth like it's swimming. Now we can even try making an elephant. Just like we did when we made the swan, you'll bend your hand You'll put your pinky up, your index finger up, so now you have tusks and a trunk. Then if you put your left hand over the top, you can make the head of the elephant a little bigger. Awesome! What other animals or creations do you think you could make? That sounds great! I challenge you to create a story with your shadow puppets and act it out for someone else. Also, what other things could you put in front of the light, like we did with the Tupperware and the bowl, to see how the light changes and the shadows change? You can even make that a part of your story. Well, that concludes our video today. I hope you had an awesome time and I can't wait to hear about what you came up with. Happy trying. See you next time.